we're going to approach this from the vantage point of practical applications of 5G. So, you know, Alltrack, we make small cellular devices that fit onto existing ag equipment, such as pumps and valves and uh, wind machines, for example. And then from your phone, you're able to control those pieces of equipment. So we've been using cellular technology um, such as 2G and 3G for a long time. Um, and we're transitioning into 5G. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit of what that looks like and uh, what that's going to unlock for you guys. Uh, so cellular technology, there's been, you know, 5G, five generations. Um, so the first generation technology was for those big brick cell phones that you see in those movies from the 80s. Um, this, you know, second generation was for texting. Um, so that's in the 90s. And then along with the advent of, you know, Blackberries and iPhones, um, they really ramped up 3G, which allowed for browsing, you know, at pretty decent speeds um, and email and things like that. Uh, and then right now, you know, 4G LTE, which is pretty much the same thing, um, that is uh, the predominant technology. And that was released in 09, but really um, has taken off, you know, probably in the last five years. Um, and then we get to today, which is 5G. And 5G, you know, if you see it on the TV where it's like 5G for, you know, Verizon or T-Mobile, um, what they're talking about is very high speed 5G where, you know, you can download uh, 10 gigabits per second, which is about a gigabyte per second. Um, so you're looking at speeds that approach, you know, like fiber. Um, and so, you know, the big question is like, what, what does that unlock? Um, I think the jury's still out on that, but uh, in the next coming years, we'll see it. And then there's another part of 5G that they don't talk about so much, and that is um, kind of these lower bandwidth uh, protocols. And that's really what I'll talk about is this, it's called CAT M1. Um, so 5G, you know, they're going to need new equipment, they're going to need new towers, it's going to cost billions of dollars. And um, while you get really high speed transmission rates, the range is tiny. So the range is about 500 meters, which is about a third of a mile. Um, and this is really going to be focused on the urban core. So cities, um, you know, places like that that can afford to put these repeaters uh, every 500 meters. And so what they'll do is they'll put those on light poles, um, you know, places in cities that are kind of out of the way. And those are really high power consumption. Um, so I think right now I haven't heard of very many good applications for agriculture. You know, there's kind of some pie in the sky ideas about, you um, using drones and AI and imaging, but as far as practical applications, you know, you're just not going to have deployment out in the uh, boonies. So that's where 5G CAD M1 comes in. And if you take away anything from this talk, keep in mind CAT M1. Um, so what that does is that uses existing LTE equipment that's already out there. They just have to reprogram it. Um, and what it allows is it's very uh, low transmission rates. So we're talking like dial up speed internet, but the range is super long. So 60 miles where LTE might be 30 miles. Um, so it extends the range a lot. And then it's also very low power consumption. So you're able to get away with you know, just having a battery and maybe a small solar panel where before you'd need to be, you know, plugged into an outlet. Um, and so what's the present state? Like how do people currently use the 3G and 4G technologies? And then I'll talk about, you know, what 5G is gonna enable. So right now, most people have a base station, which is cellular. And then that cellular base station probably has power 
It's probably plugged into the home ranch um, or a barn or something. And then for each sensor or for each piece of equipment, there's a small radio on it. Um, you can do Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but they're not good going through water and plants are mostly water. And so you really, Bluetooth, you might get 30 feet out of it. Wi-Fi, you might get a couple hundred feet, but if you're doing large deployments, um, it's not gonna be a good choice. And so most people use radios. Um, it could be LoRa, could be, um, there's a few different variants. I'll just lump it into radios. Uh, so you have your base station, which talks to equipment via radios and the radios have a set check-in time. So every 15 minutes they upload to the base station, or maybe it has to even go through a repeater to a base station and then up to the cloud. So there's a lot of links in the chain. In the future state, which is with CAD M1, each device is going to connect directly through cellular to the cloud. So you don't need repeaters, uh, you don't need base stations, you don't need radios. You just have a cellular modem in each sensor or each piece of equipment. Um, and this is what Alltrack does today. So the benefits you get out of this is um, you have a lot of redundancy. So as opposed to having you know that base station in the center that uh, if that goes down, your whole network goes down, each individual device is connecting. And so if one of them gets hit by a tractor, you know, that doesn't affect the other ones. Um, it's also very easy to deploy. So, you know, it's just like your cell phone. You, you know, if your cell phone dies, you plug it in, it automatically reconnects to the, to the cloud um, through its cellular modem. And that's what these devices are going to do. You know, if you have your radio and your base station, you have to figure out where to put it, uh, where to put the repeaters. It's very hard to troubleshoot. Um, you don't know if it's, you know, the node or the repeater or the base station. Um, so it's a little bit of a puzzle. And then maintenance, um, you know, CADM1 again, it's easy because it's either the device or it's the cellular network. And it rarely is the cellular network because they're incentivized to have extremely high uptime. And they're incentivized through government contracts for you know, emergency services. Um, so if police radios don't work, that's a really big deal. And so AT&T and Verizon, they're gonna have excellent uptime. Um, if you're doing your base station and cellular uh, paradigm, you're going to have to maintain that network and figure out what's wrong with it, or you're going to have to hire somebody to do that. And so today you'll see, you know, a few different companies who are selling this IOT as a service. Um, and that's one way they're trying to get around this whole base station radio concept. Um, but you're going to pay for it either way. And then the, you know, that's all kind of taking away pain points, but one thing that CAD M1 uh, actually unlocks for you is that your devices are always going to be connected. So instead of having a radio that is passive that checks in every 15 minutes to send information and download instructions, um, these radios are always connected. So it's just like sending a text message. You know, it's not instantaneous, might take three or five seconds, um, but it's very quick. And so CAD M1, that's the big benefit is, you know, if you're, if you have a geyser out in your field because, you know, a tractor hit some sub main, you could just instantly turn it off. You're now no longer waiting for a check-in, you know, for the valve before you can turn it off. Um, so this is something that Alltrack is rolling out. Um, we don't have it today, but as CAD M1 is more widely deployed, this is going to become, you know, standard uh, kind of feature in our offering. 
So, you know, what are the objections to this? Like, you know, why might this not work? Um, and, you know, one big way is cost, right? Could be too expensive. So, you know, five years ago, that's definitely the case. It was too expensive to put a modem in every single device. Um, even today, modems cost, you know, 75 bucks and um, which is pretty expensive. You know, radios are probably $8, $10, something like that. Um, very soon though, and this is all due to cell phones again, you know, we're getting a lot of benefits from all that technology are those modem costs are coming down substantially um, as we get more and more cell phones into the market. So, you know, pretty soon, I think next generation technology, our modems will cost somewhere around $12. Um, and then another cost in the hardware is the, you know, power system. So do you need a battery? Like how big is your battery? Do you need a, a big car battery? So in the past on 4G, you know, for a weather station, you might have um, a big car battery out there. Um, with 5G, you're only going to need a, a small battery and maybe a small solar panel. Um, so that really pulls out a lot of cost in this as well. Then another component of the cost is the data. So, you know, again, 10 years ago for a weather station, you might have to go out to your local, you know, Cricket Wireless or Verizon store and buy a SIM card and put it in there. And then you're paying 20 bucks a month uh, forever for that. Today, what they do is you are, you know, that cost has come down a lot. And that's through, um, you know, just having more of these IoT devices out there. So instead of having to have a, a cell phone plan, you could have a plan for an IoT device because they know you're only using, you know, megabytes of data instead of, say gigabytes of data. Um, and then in the future, that's gonna come down even more. So a lot of the big network operators are talking about, you know, paying 20 cents a month for data, which when it gets to 20 cents a month, you're, it's basically free. Um, you know, if it's $2 a year, like, you know, that can be wrapped, wrapped up uh, very, you know, into the cost of the device very easily. Um, and then maybe your third objection is, well, yeah, but I don't have cellular coverage everywhere. Um, and that's, that is an issue with kind of 4G technologies um, where each different operator was siloed. And so you could be installing equipment on, um, you could be installing a cellular device on a piece of equipment and you know, be staring at an AT&T tower but you're having trouble connecting to Verizon or vice versa. Um, the thing with 5G is that they have standardized around a certain spectrum. And so a single device would be able to connect to really any network in the US, uh, at and Verizon, um, US Cellular, if you're in rural areas in Washington, for example. So this is really gonna unlock a lot of coverage that we can't take advantage of today. And so how does, you know, Alltrack position itself? Like, what are, what are we doing about this? Um, so we are a cellular first um, customer, basically. Um, and so what that means is we work directly with these network providers to get, you know, extremely good rates, um, you know, modems at low cost. And everything that we sell has a cellular modem in it. So we don't have a radio that goes to a base station, everything is cellular in it. Um, and then because of the lower data fees, we're able to pool that data cost. Uh, we do that for five years right now. So if you buy a device, it's gonna work for five years um, and there's no reoccurring fees during that time. And then mobile first. So, you know, another thing, we didn't really talk about it in this presentation, but everybody's got a computer in their pocket now. And instead of, you know, in the old paradigm, having to log into a portal on your desktop computer um, and then managing it from there, every feature that we build 
is designed to be used on a mobile device. Um, so you can do it from your car, you can do it in the field, you can do it at home. Um, it still works on desktop. It's just, that's not uh, where we jump into the problem. Um, and then it works with any equipment. So our devices work with any wind machine, work with any pump, work with any type of valve um, with a latching solenoid. Um, so, you know, we feel that growers need a single platform where they can control their equipment. Um, and that's, that's just for ease of use, but it's also for interaction between equipment. So if you have a soil moisture out in your field, that can inform your irrigation plan. And you can then um, take that irrigation plan and implement it in the same platform to control your pumps and your valves. If you have, you know, disparate um, systems working, that interaction is very difficult and tedious. Um, so those are the ways that, you know, we're approaching this. I think the cellular first um, really sets us apart. Um, and I hope this presentation gave you a little bit of backstory about why we're doing that that way and the industry trends that we're trying to, you know, ride. Um, so I'm going to open this up to Q&A. Um, if you guys have any questions, please drop them into um, that Q&A button. All right. Uh, we got a question from Taylor. If I'm an existing all track customer, will I need to upgrade my hardware to take advantage of this new 5G technology? So the answer is if you were an early adopter of our technology, um, then potentially yes. If you have a 2G or 3G modem, then yes, you will. And that um, those networks are actually being sunset pretty rapidly, so probably in the next 12 months. Um, the new modems that we sell have either the 4G LTE or the 5G CAT M1 on them. So they'll work today anywhere that you have LTE uh, and they'll work in the future for the 5G when that gets expanded. All right, Chad asks, any opportunities for mobile equipment like tractors or harvesters? Alltrack really focuses on fixed equipment. Um, I, the answer is yes, 5G has tons of applications for mobile equipment. Um, you'd be able to upload a lot of data. And so some of the applications that I've seen for that could be um, you know, cameras that are looking for weeds, for example, for kind of an automated um, weeding system. And similar to how your phone, you know, if you have Siri, you say, hey, Siri. And if you don't have an internet connection, uh, she won't work. Um, but the, it would be like that. So you'd be able to upload data, do some processing, really powerful processing, and then download sort of the uh, instructions uh, back from that. But like I said, Alltrack, we don't, we don't, do that today. Um, we might get into it in the future. And then we got one more. Is the CAT M1 speed too slow for ag applications? Um, again, if you're doing like cameras, then yes, it definitely is. Um, if you're only looking to do, you know, control or monitoring, uh, that's where this really shines, where you're just sending bytes of data. Um, you're not sending images. So uh, and that's honestly what it's designed for is really low data applications. And then if you guys want to get a hold of us, um, you can go to alltrack.io. Um, you know, we can answer your questions there. You could also contact support at alltrack.io. 
Um, we'll also upload this presentation, which includes our contact information. Um, so you can talk to us there. Appreciate your time. I hope this was helpful.